Hello friends, James Corbett here in the sunny climes of Western Japan, July 9th, 2018. And I say that advisedly because it is a sunny day here today, although obviously it has not been in recent days. So thank you to all of those who wrote in with your concern about myself and my family, uh, having seen, I'm sure, the incredible devastation that's been wrought in Western Japan over the last few days with the apocalyptic flooding, the incredible amounts of rainfall um, that Western Japan has seen over the last few days absolutely just stunning um shocking really and uh, as as i'm sure you've seen dozens dead dozens missing over a million people evacuated just total chaos it's been quite horrible and uh thankfully myself my family my friends have been spared but many people have not so you'll forgive me if i've been distracted over the last few days uh with this devastation literally all around where we are um, just another reminder that uh, life is uh, precious and fleeting, so um, just uh, there's nothing you can do to prepare for apocalyptic flooding like this. At any rate, uh, thank you to, again to all those who expressed your concern, but we are safe uh, where we are, and thankfully it was forecast that rain was going to continue all weekend, but it did let up, uh, I believe, late Saturday or early Sunday. At any rate, it did let up, and... Uh, thankfully, the rivers are returning to a more normal level now. Um, but it was quite uh, incredible there for a while. All right, having said that, uh, and having explained why I have been distracted over the last few days, I should also explain that I'm never so distracted that I'm not <laughs> thinking about and keeping up with this news uh, that I report. Um, and this week has been no exception. And something that has stuck out to me uh, particularly over the last week or two. Obviously, this is something that's been going on for a while, but particularly in the last couple of weeks, are these stories about Chinese military preparations and Chinese military buildup. Uh, for example, China is working on a new fighter jet for aircraft carriers to replace its aging and mechanically uh, failure-prone J-15s. Um, which were based on a prototype of fourth-generation Russian Su-33 twin-engined air fighter uh, craft, um, which obviously are capable of being launched from aircraft carriers. Uh, now it looks like China is looking to replace them in something newer and shinier and tip-toppier, and perhaps even more headline-grabbing, uh, the Laser AK-47, quote-unquote, that has been developed by a, uh, a Chinese company, um, that is being marketed as the Z ZKZM, ZKZM for my Canadian brethren, 500 um, laser assault rifle, which apparently produces an energy beam that cannot be seen with the naked eye, but can pass through windows and cause instant carbonization of human skin and tissue, set fire to objects near and far. Um, some pretty incredible things, and there was some skepticism shown in the international media when this was announced, so the company in, uh, released some videos of them basically setting some things on fire with this laser gun. These types of things are once again hitting the news, um, but perhaps more worryingly is the overall trend, not these specific stories about this or that uh, piece of whiz-bang technology, but the overall trend. And the overall trend is that Xi Jinping, who you will remember is now president for life, and if you do not remember that fact, you should go back to my editorial from March of this year, where I talked about this Xi Jinping president for life idea, where it comes from, what it actually means, and its significance. But anyway, Xi Jinping, who has really set himself up to be president for life, is uh, are ordering more and more of a uh, uh, stepping up of military preparation, stepping up of exercises, an overall overhaul of the um, Chinese military. And that's taking uh, the f a number of different forms. For example, uh, the South China Morning Post is reporting that China's army has been infiltrated by peace disease after years without a war. And this is coming from the People's Liberation Army Daily, which, as you can imagine from the headline there, yes, is a propaganda rag, um, a Communist Party mouthpiece. But at any rate, the People's Liberation Army Daily had an editorial recently in which they literally said, peace disease has been a common symptom in our military for decades, and if we don't make up our mind to eliminate those evils, we must pay a heavy cost in the event of a war. We can only stop a war when we are able to fight. Hmm, I wonder where we've heard that kind of war is peace uh, rhetoric before. Um, but 
Perhaps most interestingly is a leaked document that was published by Kyoto, or it was not published by, but reported on by Kyoto News last week. China's military reforms aimed at offshore expansion, Communist Party document says. China's military reforms are aimed at expanding its military might from the traditional focus on land territories to maritime influence to protect the nation's strategic interests in a new era, according to an internal reader of China's Central Military Commission, obtained by Kyoto News. And it goes on to talk about this reform of the Chinese military, and they're basically seeking to expand their military and specifically naval capabilities. Um, But uh, perhaps most interestingly, uh, uh, later on in this document, they start talking about the need to prepare for war so that they're not, you know, overwhelmed by it. You know, the same ideas that Uh, peace disease uh, that the People's Liberation Army Daily was talking about. Uh, But it says, through a series of adjustments to the military strategy, the balance, dimension, and expansion of our strategic goal will be strengthened. It will be conducive to more effectively create a situation, manage a crisis, contain a conflict, win a war, defend the expansion of our country's strategic interests in an all-around fashion, and realize the goals set by the party and Chairman Xi. And it uh, goes on to talk about the necessity of military reforms. It says that the U.S., Russia, Japan, and several other countries became str- uh, strong militarily because uh, – became strong countries because they have a strong military. And it says, the lessons of history teach us that strong military might is important for a country to grow from being big to being strong. A strong military is the way to avoid the Thucydides trap and escape the obsession that war is unavoidable between an emerging power and a ruling hegemony. Hmm, the Thucydides trap. That's an interesting phrase, and maybe it rings a bell. I hope it does, because, of course, I did talk about it last year. And the question is, what is Thucydides trap? Well, uh, as Graham Ellison writes in the preface to his book, as a rapidly ascending China challenges America's accustomed predominance, these two nations risk falling into a deadly trap, first identified by the ancient Greek historian Thucydides. Writing about a war that devastated the two leading city-states of classical Greece two and a half millennia ago, he explained, it was the rise of Athens and the fear this instilled in Sparta that made war inevitable. Inevitable which is uh, an interesting word to be using. Yes, the Thucydides trap and the idea that we are being led into a new great war scenario between the, the established power of the United States and the rising power of China. And here it is, not crazy conspiracy theorist James Corbett talking about it, but the Chinese Central Military Commission talking about it in their documents. We have to avoid the Thucydides trap by building up the strongest military that we can. And hence, you know, the J-15 replacements and the laser AK-47s and all the other things that uh, China is rolling out uh, at a steady stream right now, uh, including uh, greatly expanding their uh, their various exercises and drills, um, 45 of them in the past year, if memory serves. So they're definitely increasing their military might in conjunction with a number of things. Of course, with the buildup of the one belt, one road policy that I've talked about a number of times uh, in my work. But also, interestingly, of course, all of this coming to the fore as the trade war um, begins in earnest between the U.S. and China. And I've been writing quite a bit about that and how that all relates geopolitically. So uh, militarily, geopolitically, economically, all of these things coming to a head exactly as they did in World War I, exactly as I pointed out in my Echoes of World War I presentation. Please watch the full or listen to the full presentation if you have not yet done so. Uh, I think it's important to get to the bottom of what's really going on here and where things are trending. But as always, and as I did in that presentation, and as I always do, I will encourage you to look at the bigger picture of what's going on here through works of mine like China and the New World Order or The Great Decoupling, How the West is Engineering Its Own Downfall, where I point out that just as in the 20th century when the Soviet Union rose as the great menace and the great power that was threatening the U.S. hegemony, it only did so because, explicitly because, of the technology transition transfers and the economic aid that was supplied by the West to the Soviet Union to allow it 
to be the menace of the 20th, 20th century, so too, in the exact same way, all of these incredible gugads and technologies that are coming out from the Chinese military now, including the drones and the new fighter jets and the, uh, and the laser AK-47s, are part and parcel of technology transfers that have been taking place for the last few decades now at this point between the U.S. and the West generally and China. And this has been done explicitly, and I detail that in in my work in China and the New World Order, in the Great Decoupling, in other things that I've done, talking about some of these technology transfers and what they've enabled. So this is a process that is going on right now, and it is the narrative that we are that is being set for the 21st century, and it is a manipulated narrative, exactly as the same way that the Cold War of the 20th century was a manipulated narrative, but it's still a real reality in the real world uh, that will affect well, billions of people's lives, ultimately, if it does follow the Cold War pattern. And so we have to be aware of this and have to see these stories that are coming out in that context. So, yes, we now have the Chinese Military Commission confirming the Thucydides trap. It's uh, getting to be pretty hairy. Um, they're talking about the unavoidable uh, uh, war if, uh, if things do not change or if the Chinese military doesn't build up enough military might to combat the peace disease. This is scary rhetoric because we know where this is heading and although it may be manipulated and staged behind the scenes, the wars that will result from this are unfortunately all too real and will affect the lives and perhaps take the lives of many, many millions around the world. And that's why we have to keep our eye on on exactly what is happening here and the buildup that is taking place um, so that we can counter this narrative, expose it as the lie that it is, and undermine the call for war when it comes. And it is coming. It's coming. So let's keep this all in mind. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.